God is moving. Yeah. It's Young People Nation. Welcome to Young People Nation. Listen to us weekly as we commit to bring transparency, healing, and truth to the everyday situations in life that might bring you down. Join us for your weekly dose of inspiration. Thank you for listening to Young People Nation. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And now, here's your host, Eugene and Donna Perry. Let's go. Christ is the foundation. Know his word gonna lead us. Know I'm already going. Taking steps I believe in. Giving guidance to the youth. Giving guidance to the lost. Give the world to the project. Lead them back to the cross. And welcome back to session two. This is Young People Nation. And again, we always first thank God. We thank God for our sponsors and supporters. Uh, we we got people in Texas. We got people locally. We got people overseas that support us. Mm. And we're very grateful. Mm. We're very, very grateful. And we're wow. back again with we're Mr. Back. Vince Brown <laughs> and Mr. Patrick Page. All right. Absolutely. These guys really don't need a lot of introduction, but let me just give you a little bit about them. They are men of God. That's what stands out about them both, period. And um, But they're in the community. Vince is a business coach and strategy, strategy integrator, and he is the creative partner of the New Level Network and Operation Timothy. I have Mr. Patrick Page. Um, again, thank you for your service to our country. Yeah, um, he is a revolutionary speaker, a business and life purpose coach. Okay. <laughs> and uh, he is also a creative partner of New Level Network and Operation Timothy. Yes, Welcome back, young man. <laughs> it feels good to be back. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. And in this session, um, session two, we're going to be talking about the importance of grieving mm. uh, properly as a man. And we, first of all, just want to thank you both for being so transparent over the lunch. Because this is where this all starts. Absolutely. You can't get up here on the platform and talk when you haven't talked. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Correct? That's right. Absolutely. Mm. And so, Patrick, mm. um, you shared about losing your father mm. by murder at 13 years of age. Um, share your process, if you don't mind, mm. about that. And you you, you would never know that mm. by the spirit that you give off as a man. Wow. So first off, thank you for having us. And um, that process for me uh, is still a process. Mm. And mm. my healing really didn't start until uh, my early 20s. Mm -hmm. um, I am now 26, but when that happened, 13 years ago, I'll be honest, I didn't really understand my own emotions mm -hmm, at that mm -hmm. time. And my family, I'm gonna tell you, when it comes down to grief, sometimes family is is there on the day that it happens, right? Mm -hmm, it's, it's mm -hmm. only, and, but I always say, what, what about that process after? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And immediately what happened to me is I, I started to feel like I couldn't really speak about the things that I was feeling mm -hmm. at 13 years of age. And when I really thought about being in eighth grade, going to high school, you know, that's a very transitional point for a young mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. So I already was like feeling a lot when it comes down to like my leadership development, mm -hmm. but I felt delayed. Okay. I felt delayed because I didn't have any men in my life that was affirming me mm -hmm. right. in that journey. Mm -hmm. Wow, and it really hurt me mm -hmm. because on the day that my father was killed, I had men in my family saying, "You know what? I'll be here for you." Mm -hmm. But that didn't happen. Okay, so wow. for me, even healing from the grieving from my father, mm -hmm. I also had to grieve for the people that were still alive mm -hmm. that said that they would be there. And I think sometimes grieving, we think that grieving is just with people that are no longer here physically. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to grieve family members that's here, yes. but they're not mm -hmm. there in the way you need them to be there. Okay. Right. Yes. And I, and I had to process both of those things at the same time. Mm -hmm. And what I started to do was I started to write. Mm -hmm. I started to write down the way that I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that God gifted me with speaking to other people's pain mm -hmm. because I had to use my own mm -hmm. to be able to express that. Mm -hmm. So I started to write poetry. I started to perform poetry in middle school, going into high school. And then I realized that my family needed me to be able to display that. And I realized I was coaching my mother. Like when, I, when my grandfather died, I was coaching my mother through grieving my grandfather mm -hmm. because I lost my father, my father before my mom lost her father. 
Okay. So mm-hmm. I realized that God positioned me for that. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we think like, why me, God? Yeah. Right. Like, why why right. are you doing this to me yeah, right why now? Why I got to go through that? That mm-hmm. started to be revealed to me at a very mm-hmm. young age that uh-huh. I'm I'm conditioning you for your calling. Mm-hmm. And that conditioning was still part of my healing. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I need to show other people how to use their voice mm-hmm. to communicate the things that they're feeling. Mm-hmm. So I started to fall in love with the process of communication very early because I realized that if I kept it in, it will rot. Mm-hmm. Poetry is one of your things too as well, mm-hmm. correct? A- absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Spoken word. Spoken word, okay. poetry. That's something that I've always been passionate about. Yeah. And that was my first outlet. Okay. Like in, in healing and, and honestly, before I even leaned into community and church, mm-hmm. I had to figure out what was my place. Mm-hmm. Right. Because we all have a special calling and ministry when it comes down to our experiences. Yes. Okay. yes. And I realized that at that moment, God was calling me to speak. Mm-hmm. And and whatever matter that is, there's an art of expression that okay. comes from me being able to speak. And I went, I realized that there was a positive reinforcement mm-hmm. that I was doing with speaking. Wow. And mm-hmm. for me, that's why my very first speaking engagement that I ended up doing in 2020, I called it the positive reinforcement. Mm-hmm. That was the very first time I invited my family from Charlotte, North Carolina, everybody mm-hmm. here in Augusta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. And I wanted everybody to hear me tell my story. My family mm-hmm. never heard me talk about these mm-hmm. things. They mm-hmm. heard it through poetry. Mm-hmm. But I did it through in a way where I wanted them to understand here's where I've been over the past decade. Wow. And here's how you could be a part of my process going forward. So I realized that I had to first find a way for me to communicate. Mm-hmm. And then I had to bring my family and those that are close to me along with that journey because grieving is not just about you. Mm-hmm. It's about the people that are close to you. Yes. So I had to learn about that. And that's that's normally how the process mm-hmm. started for mm-hmm. me. And that's kind of what I do right now is like, there's still healing that's going on. Yes. And as that's going on, I share with people that's close to me. I share with my brothers in these circles. Like just recently, Valentine's Day, I told them that was a tough day for me. That's the day that I lost my father. That was a very Mm -hmm. tough day for me, Mm -hmm. even recently. Mm -hmm. But brotherhood. Yes. And that's and that's where I lean on my brothers and I lean on my community because I know that God has called me in community with brothers to be able to share these different experiences with. And that's that's, and that's that's where it came Mm -hmm. from. Mm. Wow. Mm. Vince, now mm. you talked about losing your grandmother. Mm-hmm. Talk about that. So um, for me, that, mm. that was something that happened early on 2005, 2009, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It was in 2009. And so for me, that was one of my first experiences with death as it related to someone that was close. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, the thing that I always respected about my grandmother was that she was the person that was able to hold a family together. Mm-hmm. You know how, how grandmothers right. do. Yeah, they, yeah. She was the one that held a family together. And so whenever she passed, what I noticed was that that same respect that was given wasn't mm-hmm. necessarily given anymore. And the mm-hmm. same way that the family was held together, it started to disband. Mm-hmm. And so me and my sister, we started, and this is like throughout the years, we started like talking and started hearing these different things of like the ones that changed it. And like, that that little short saying was relating to the ones that changed the relationship as far as our family goes and our mm-hmm. family dynamics. Mm-hmm. And so for me, like what the grieving process was like, because she passed from cancer. And mm-hmm. so at at that age, I think I was around nine or so, I didn't really understand it then as far as what was going on. Mm-hmm. We, I just know that we were all in the house, in the living room, mm-hmm. the same room in which she passed on the night that she did. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I can just remember being there and... uh like my, my auntie attempting to wake her up to give her her medicine mm-hmm. and she wouldn't wake up. And mm-hmm. so she kept calling her and then eventually they told us to like go to the back room. And so, you know, nine, 10 years old, we just like, yeah, we just gonna go to the back. We're back right. there playing, talking. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as we're talking, it's like three o'clock in the morning or so. And then we see like, you know, ambulance lights coming mm-hmm. past. And so still not really registering, knowing that something wasn't right, but not really being able to mm-hmm. register mm-hmm. Um, until finally they come back and they're like, well, you know, grandma passed and so Mm -hmm. not really understanding that then obviously knowing that that i was sad and i was hurt but i didn't really understand how to grieve because i never had to and even after that you know there there wasn't a proper grieving process then until Mm -hmm. like pat said until being in my 20s now being able to understand the emotions that i felt because of that and also the things that lacked in that grieving process Mm -hmm. and and so how that transitions into today is like my knack and my love for relationship building mm-hmm. because 
my grandmother was a person that was she was built on relationships. She mm-hmm. right. she went to she you know she went to high school here and so deeply rooted in the community. Yes. working at Grace Wood and like retiring from there. So mm-hmm. everywhere you go, you say Lou Neal Brown, they they know who she is. Yes. and so for me, my passion and I, I started to notice being in my twenties mm-hmm. that my love for relationship building was based off of the relationship that my grandmother not only had with me and our family, mm-hmm. but also that she displayed out in the community. And Mm -hmm. so like when I go, when I talk about like my professional career, like sales and then then these different corporate positions Mm -hmm. and how I've been able to excel, it's not that I really care about business or sales, but I love relationships Mm -hmm. and being able to carry long term relationships Mm -hmm. that that impact not only myself, but also others in a way that it's like whatever you whatever you need. Like we always say it cliche. Mm -hmm. Look, anytime you need me, call me. I'm there. But, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like but. Past the cliche part, I'm talking yeah. about like for real being mm-hmm. able to be there yes. for somebody. That's what I love. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so um, what my grieving process was like for me and how I was able to conceptualize what actually happened was now making sure as I'm moving forward, I keep that same love for relationships. Mm-hmm. And I'm able to, whenever I have these conversations and whenever we mm-hmm. encounter men and not only men, but also women, yeah. we do a mm-hmm. lot of we do a lot of corporate coaching when it comes to different CEOs and founders inside of right. these corporate spaces. Yes. They don't have that relationship component. Yeah, and so mm-hmm. when a part of that development and a part of that coaching is figuring out how do you build relationships with people mm-hmm. that allow them to now understand who you are mm-hmm. at your core. The business part is cool, but understand yeah. who you mm-hmm. are at your core. Mm-hmm. Yes, and the things that you've been through and being able to be transparent and vulnerable with them. Mm-hmm. So now, when it comes to something that you offer on the business side, they're going to have more of a buy-in because they understand you and your story mm-hmm. and why it is that you were able to create what it is that that you created. Yes. But for me, my grieving process was early on, not knowing how to grieve, yeah. mm-hmm. coming over into an adult yeah. and making sure that once I now grieve, that I'm able to keep that same love. And that same passion that my grandmother had for mm. relationship building mm. and sternness when it comes mm. to those relationships. Yeah. And I'm carrying that forward in my everyday conversations and the people that I'm interacting with. Okay. Mm. I, I, I know the life. I, I can identify with um, my grandmother when she passed and all. And we used to talk for what? hours and all. And she used to tell me about the Civil War mm. because she was back there during the Civil War time. Mm. And we had intimate conversations. And she constantly talks to me even now through situations that come up Mm -hmm. and one of the most important that i see that y'all have done y'all did not let them die twice Mm -hmm. and by that Mm -hmm. i mean that's good baby it, by that I mean their That's teachings, their mm-hmm. teachings that 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 mm. they have That's in, good. infused in in your soul and mm. your body comes out mm. relationship, a mm. uh, 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 presence, mm. uh, um, not missed mm. because they live on through you. So you, I congratulate y'all that y'all did not let them die twice. Mm. Wow, That's powerful. That's mm. powerful. Wow. That's almost a, that's a sea law moment there. Mm. <laughs> Um, mm. did either you all require professional help through your journeys? As in the in the space of counseling, yes, therapists. Mm-hmm. So, what's the stigma in our community when it, <laughs> you don't need no? You don't, that, yep. nah, they don't, why am I, I gonna go tell them all my business? Right. Yep. I didn't. I didn't realize I, and I still haven't gone through mm-hmm. tri- like official therapy. Right. Okay. I've been blessed to have. Mm. Um, there are people that are therapists inside of our community now yes. that mm-hmm. we can now have conversations yes. with. Mm-hmm. But as far as the, like officially going through, I never, that was never a thing. I've always mm-hmm. thought about it. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. just like, yeah, I don't, you right. know, I'll be okay. Yeah. And then I didn't realize that I actually needed it. The The first time I realized that I needed therapy was when I, I was in college at Savannah State my freshman year mm-hmm. and I experienced my first depression. Mm-hmm. Typically what what is normal in college, but mm-hmm. I experienced my first real depression and when mm. I say like depression I'm not talking about like a week two weeks or a month I'm talking about months mm. mm-hmm. and so it was at that point and after certain thoughts that that were there and how dark things actually got that's when mm. I realized that maybe I do need and so mm-hmm. I went and I began to like seek out resources on campus mm-hmm. didn't follow through with them okay mm-hmm. but um, I just thank God that 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 introduction to what therapy is was mm-hmm. enough to carry me through at that point in time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. man I, w- I would just say this um 
therapy was never on my mind growing up because mm-hmm. the resource was never talked about. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, we one financially we wasn't in the situation to pay for a therapist. Right. Um, but growing up also, we didn't understand what those resources looked like because mm-hmm. nobody in my household or around my household talked about it. Mm-hmm. I did have people in my in um growing up in school, I had teachers that mm-hmm. would say, invite me out to church and they would right. have mm-hmm. these sessions with me and they would talk with mm-hmm. me and they would love on me. Mm-hmm. And I needed that because I really I grew up in a household where it was like fourteen of us in one household. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, my aunts and my sister with her kids and there was a lot of different like energies in one house Mm -hmm. so me grieving wasn't really a priority Mm -hmm. right so there was never an opportunity for me to even have that extra time Mm -hmm. to even express myself even about my day Mm -hmm. so I found myself doing a lot of after school activities Mm -hmm. I found myself joining ROTC right I found myself doing these different things that helped me as a leader but also helped me have women and men Mm -hmm. that would take on and disciple me and and Mm -hmm. speak to me and give me opportunity to have conversations. Mm -hmm. So I would say professional help, um, that wasn't a resource for me. Mm -hmm. Um, But I did have men and women in the community Mm -hmm. that would take me under their wing and really be able to have me uh, really express myself to them. Okay. So you really had Mm -hmm. uh, locked away agendas, locked away uh, circumstances that were never addressed. Mm -hmm. And how did you avoid the buildup? Honestly, uh, didn't. Mm-hmm. I just, like when we talk about how Pat mentioned earlier, like projection, mm-hmm. and that was a real thing. Is I never, like all the locked away traumas and the things that were stored, mm-hmm. they never went away. Mm-hmm. They, same thing, distracting myself with sports and being an athlete right. and, you know, and all these different community engagements that, that I were actually involved in. And yeah, mm-hmm. once again, building my leadership skills. Mm-hmm. But as far as dealing with the actual thing, I thought that because I felt better that I was better. Mm-hmm. That's it. And mm-hmm. I didn't That's notice it. until my 20s, once yes. again, that mm-hmm. those same issues, they never went away. They just mm-hmm. started to now show up in other areas. Yeah. You know, yeah. and mm-hmm. for me, the like the only thing that I can really say that helped me to avoid when I when I say the build up. Like one of the like elephants in the room when it comes to depression is suicide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The right. only thing that helped me avoid that was like literally, and not I'm I'm not saying it clichely. I'm saying like God for real. Yeah, yeah. Because yes. I didn't. It it was at times where I actually fathomed the thought, but I just couldn't carry through with the action. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and so that's for me the only the only way I was able to avoid that build up mm-hmm. was God. Literally, yeah, yeah. amen. Like, literally. Period. I, I just, yeah, mm-hmm. what he just said is like so strong because mm-hmm. for me the build up I couldn't prevent it mm-hmm. it happened but to me it was like right at that point where it was about to be done for me right. and I remember mm-hmm. this was like right before COVID hit mm-hmm. it was in 2020 um, just got out the military mm-hmm. and you know, I was in a I was in a long relationship of four years, mm-hmm. and um, we just ended our relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, I had my house mm-hmm. at the time; literally, my house was falling apart. I had my room, my master bedroom, fell into my kitchen. I mean, I mm-hmm. felt everything in my life was just falling apart. Mm-hmm. Right. And I remember, literally, it was nighttime, maybe around midnight. And I remember driving over a bridge, and I remember just crying mm-hmm. and just releasing, mm-hmm. and something. In my head, and at this point, I know it was the enemy, it was just like drive off the cliff. Mm-hmm. Right. My very first thought of even suicide mm-hmm. crossed my mind at that time, just drive off the cliff. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't do nothing but just sob and just mm-hmm. really cry out to the Lord because I know that that wasn't, that wasn't the voice I needed to be hearing. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And at that moment, I realized I have to, something has to change. Mm-hmm. That's That's when I really started to seek relationship with God too because I realized that I can't do this with my own strength. Mm-hmm. The buildup also has to be addressed with realizing that this is not my weight to carry. Yeah. So I had to release and mm-hmm. I had to give that back to God because there was mm-hmm. things that I thought that I could do with my own thoughts and my mm-hmm. own strategies and my, it wasn't up mm-hmm. to me. And at mm-hmm. that moment, I realized that, you know, this is too much for me to carry by myself. Mm-hmm. My goodness. And, and people need to realize that voice that is speaking. It's a subtle voice. It's a voice that you recognize. Yep. That's why you listen to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know when it went, when they talked to me, it, it was trying to get me to drink again, and and, uh, and then it turned around and got personal. Yeah. 
praying wife. Mm. It mm. got personal with me. <laughs> talking about, come on, dog. Your mm. wife won't find out. Mm. And I look. <laughs> and and uh, I had to call the name of Jesus. Mm. Twi- that's it, twice. That's, that's it. Twice, and it's, it's in those moments where where those voices speak that they're mm-hmm. so profound. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's like it's at the perfect time for whatever whatever when that thing is. On. It yeah. comes at at the perfect time, mm-hmm. but it's you know it's like talking about that avoiding that buildup. It's like what do you do? Who do you call on? Right, in that in that very same moment that you hear mm-hmm. that voice, what do you do in that next second? Yes, and that mm-hmm. de- that determines what. The future will look like if there is one. That's it. My yep. God. And that build up, that build up, you you have to be careful of that build up because uh, I remember a build up that I had uh, in my lifetime where I took a I took a steel bar and bent it around a, a guy's neck and, and uh, I bent it all the way so that both ends touched. And after I came back to myself, I said, "Man, what did I do that?" I mean, I just exploded, and, and, and what I exploded over wasn't that serious, but but uh, and people were trying to get the bar back off his neck. I had to go unbend it to get his neck out, and I apologized to him. That's why I always told my wife, "You will never see me angry or reach that point again." And the only reason um, I changed my my foundation. Once I changed my foundation to Christ, I was able to handle it better mm-hmm. than just explode. Because people explode or, or, or getting ran in front of with a car and then all of a sudden they got a gun. Yeah, man. Oh, wow. Lord. Mm-hmm. But mm. You see how this keep going? Yeah. See, and, <laughs> and so this is where we have to do more sessions mm, on these absolutely. right here because it's, yeah. it's a much needed conversation yes. yeah absolutely well this is the end of session two we always like to give out again as you all were talking about depression suicide anger mental health hotlines where mm-hmm. people can get help mm-hmm. again there's a 988 hotline there's a text 741 to 741 that's free 24 7 service mm-hmm. there's the nami n-a-m-i that's the mm-hmm. national alliance on mental illness and you can go to their website and reach out by the state you live in and get help. Also, you can call the 211, that's a general community hotline. That resource is 24 7. And so, nothing else, 911, please. Mm-hmm. Mr. Perry? Well, when you go through everyday life, uh, just remember you sure how much your Jesus died for our sins. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time I heard those words that he down across from my sins. I started to cry. And I got the biggest relief in my life mm-hmm. when I realized that he gave his life for me. And dealing with this mental health, you have to rely on Christ as your foundation. Because it's not going to go away. Mm-hmm. And you can't buy it off. Mm-hmm. And as you go through everyday life, the more and more yeah, you get in touch with God, there's a way out. <laughs> this has been Young People Nation, and remember, there is always hope. Let's go. Christ is the foundation. Know He's where it gon' lead us. Know I'm already going. Taking steps I believe in. Giving guidance to the youth. Giving guidance to the lost. Give the world to the project. Lead them back to the cross. He the number one prospect. He the top top boss. I was broke, I was empty. He the one that paid the cost. Really thought that I was cool. There was nothing like the savior. Now it's time for the truth. The whole world been waiting. It's your people nation. It's your people nation. It's your people nation. It's young people nation. It's young people nation. It's young people nation. It's young people nation. The whole world been waiting. Whatever you're going through, I know what he gonna do. No matter the circumstance, we going back to the room. Keep going, keep going. Let that seed keep growing. You need peace and we know it. Now it's time to live holy. Young people nation. You know what time it is. Young people nation. Get ready, the time is here. Get ready, we vibing here. We about to let God in here. Young people nation. It's young people nation. Yeah, do it for the heavens. You know where we going. Influenced by his love, you know we got to show it. It's time to put the youth on to what God is doing. Cause I can tell you now, right now, that God is moving. It's young people nation.